92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Scott is in the studio taping for RTC Channel 4. Hi, Scott. How you doing? Good afternoon. Good. Or morning. Either way. Either way. Either way. Doesn't make any difference. Or if you have a smartphone, you can download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going. And we welcome to the studio this morning, John Alley, President and CEO, Woodlawn Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. His monthly appearance on WROI and RTC. Absolutely. Nice the, this is us. the information everybody waits 30 days for every month. They absolutely do. And I'm going to remind them if they have a question for you, pick up the phone, give us a call here at 223-6059. Yeah, put me on the spot. I, I can probably answer most of them, but they <laughs> might you know, have one of those I just can't come up with an answer for. It. Board of Trustees in session yesterday. Yes, at our uh, monthly board meeting yesterday, and it was kind of a quick meeting, but we got a lot accomplished. Uh, we had a couple items, capital items, that uh, require board approval. And what we like to do is if a director says they need a, a, a new piece of equipment, they do the presentation to the board because they're the ones that knows what they need the best and they can explain it best. So we had uh, Rita Alt came in uh, for a new piece of equipment for our lab. And uh, as you can imagine, that's a fairly technical piece of equipment. And basically what we've got, we have a piece of equipment that's at its end of its useful life. So we look to replace it, but we just don't want to replace it with what we have. We try to look, can we upgrade a little bit? And Rita did an excellent job and it was come up with a piece of equipment that meets our current needs, but also will allow us to do some expanded testing in the hospital that we've had to send out in the past. So again, saves time to the physician and a little lower cost to the patient. So we try to bring those tests in-house that we can, because you can imagine once you ship it to somebody else, it does cost more, but uh, did an excellent job, and the board did approve uh, for a new lab analyzer. So probably, I'm, I'm guessing, 60 to 90 days, we should have that in-house and operational. What do you do with the old one? It depends on what it is. This piece of equipment was a leased piece of equipment, okay. so at the end of the lease, basically the manufacturer comes in, takes it back. Sometimes they can refurbish that piece of equipment and resell it, uh, or they'll just uh, decommission it and basically scrap that piece of equipment. And then the other presentation, was for uh, some new surgery equipment and uh, as you can imagine again technology has changed tremendously over the times and uh, this was a, a scope and our current cameras are just a standard definition camera. What we're looking at now to be replacing with is high definition cameras so when the surgeon does your surgical procedure and he's you know, looking at the camera much clearer picture much greater detail much like an HD TV compared to non HD so uh, you know, had uh, three different vendors came in, did a presentation. We've probably been working on this project at least three to five months. It just takes time. We bring in the piece of equipment, test it, have the physicians come in, you know, run some trials on it, get the proposals. So uh, we narrowed it down, and uh, so yesterday the board did approve uh, the lease of three new scope towers uh, and the HD cameras for our surgical department. Again, about a 90-day turnaround on that. Again, old piece of equipment. We'll return to the manufacturer. And we are leasing these because this is a, a piece of equipment that has a high turnover. A lot of technology change, so I wasn't comfortable buying it and then have to try to worry about selling it at the end of the lease or end of the term. So it's a five-year lease, so what we can do at that point, if we want to keep it, it has a fair market value that we agree on today, what it's going to be five years from now. Or we say, take it back, we get a new piece of equipment. That's probably what we'll do is because we know that technology is going to improve as time goes on. Probably a pretty expensive piece of equipment. Too. Pretty, you know, uh, for those three pieces of equipment, we're looking not to exceed about two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars if we buy it. So again, going with a, a lease, a five-year lease with a fair market value at the end, that reduces our out-of-pocket expense for that piece of equipment and allows us to upgrade to new technology in, in the five years or so. Excellent. Then we actually got into the uh, financial report for the month of April. We had uh, gross revenue of about $10.4 million for April. We wrote off $6.2 million, so we net revenue or actual cash that we have available for our use, $4.3 million. Uh, operating expenses just a little under four point three. so we actually was able to pr uh, post an income for the month of April of about $65,000. So we're still a little behind budget if we look on a year to date, but again, as we move into the, the summer months, we start picking up and we start getting back on budget for that. So it's, it was nice to see a nice small but uh, positive number for the month of April. Very busy during the month of May, so we're hoping we have a very good report for May. And it's, a, it's important for a hospital such as Woodlawn Hospital to make a profit. It is. I mean, what we do is how can we afford to put back into the, like the surgery equipment, 
we have to show a profit that builds those cash reserves that we can you know, put the equipment back in there so we continue to serve the community. And uh, you know, that kind of leads into our next discussion point, what's cash? You know, with what we're seeing now in, in insurance companies reducing what they're paying us, higher deductibles, higher co-pays, we've actually seen a, a decrease in our cash input. Um, even though more people have insurance now because of the Affordable Care Act, we're not really seeing that massive amount of new cash coming in. So we're constantly looking at new sources of cash and you know that's one of the things we challenge our directors to. What program can we put in place that has a high return on our investment? So if we're going to start a new program, if it's going to cost us X, we want to make sure we turn that money or get that back very short period of time to help produce cash. So that's one of the things that really we've been keying on right now is are there new sources of cash that we can put in place, new programs, whatever it is to help you know, bolster our cash position because it is critical. Cash, you know, in healthcare, the, the term is cash is king sure. and uh, it absolutely is. We also kind of uh, have got a couple fairly large projects coming up. One is our MRI replacement. Uh, the current MRI has been there six years. Again, it's at the end of its lease term. And it's kind of unique is that the MRI and the building are one unit. If you look at it, it looks like a part of the hospital, but it's actually a, another building that was just kind of butted up to there. So starting around June 7th, they'll decommission the current magnet. We'll have a mobile one come in while we go through that process. So hopefully by the end of June 12th, we'll have a new magnet in place. And uh, again, new technology. It's going to have a little wider bore, I, you know, the current one. When we got it, it was state-of-the-art technology, but it's got, you know, the hole that you go into is a little small. And, you know, I'm not a large person, but shoulder <laughs> to shoulder, I would rub. This one's going to have a much wider bore to it and a much shorter bore. So if you're a little, uh, you know, claustrophobic, right, exactly. this will help that because you're not going into that big, deep tunnel like we currently have. And the other neat feature of this one, a majority of the exams that we do would be quiet technology. And if you've had an MRI, it sounds like that poor piece of equipment is falling apart because you know it bangs and clangs. With the new technology, most of that goes away for most of the exams. So I think it'll be a much more enjoyable experience for folks. Excellent. So that is going to change our traffic flow. So just be aware that week, uh, you know, June seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, on the backside of the hospital, watch for some different pa patterns because we're going to have two or three cranes in there because that's what it takes to move this equipment around. You know, sorry for the inconvenience, but short term, and so just be careful of, of traffic patterns and just uh, watch what we're doing. And then the other thing, a reminder, uh, starting on June 12th, we are going to be closing the cafeteria for probably three weeks. Uh, we've got some drains that are in the kitchen area that have uh, deteriorated over time. They're the original drains when the building was built. So we've got to tear all that flooring up, dig up those drains, and put all new ones in. So that's going to require us to absolutely seal that complete area so we don't have any dirt or anything going into the rest of the hospital. So uh, be no meals prepared in the hospital. All patient meals will be prepared off-site. Uh, we found a, a location that's going to allow us to use the, their cafeteria, one of the schools. So our staff will be going there to prepare all of our patient meals and we'll be transporting those to the hospital. So that's going to be about a three-week period starting June 12th. And uh, so again, sorry for the inconvenience. And probably the, it's the hardest is to be on the staff because uh, again, a lot of them eat lunch there, so now we've already warned Dairy Queen that they might have a, an increase in uh, traffic for that three-week period. Well, uh, when it's all said and done, then will the cafeteria still look the same? It'll look the same. Okay. All, all this is going to be back in the kitchen prep okay. area. That's where the drains seem, for whatever reason, have deteriorated the worst. So that's where we got to put all new drains in there. And we have some underground steam lines that you know goes to some of the equipment in there. We're going to replace those too because. While we're in there, let's just do everything at once instead of do it now and then have to tear it back up. Yeah, again. no, you just have to go back to it. No, because it's, it's fairly expensive and it's really an inconvenience because of a food prep area. It takes longer to prep it for the uh, demolition than it does to do the work itself because exactly. we're very careful about contamination. So okay. uh, it's, it's probably going to be as long sealing everything up than it is to actually put the drains in. And that was pretty well the, the board meeting, a uh, fairly short meeting. Um, you know, it's, I think they were in shock on the money we spent for, you know, for the first two items. But again, you know, as we look long term, it's going to benefit the patients, benefit our physicians, and that's what it's all about. John Alley's president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital bringing us up to date on Woodlawn Hospital trustees meeting yesterday as well as things that are going on at Woodlawn Hospital. 
Any discussion yesterday, and you and I have talked a little bit about this down the line somewhere, room renovation at Woodlawn Hospital? Right, and that's, you know, one of the things that takes cash to do that. So we're basically a cash conservation mode. Uh, you know, we've got some affiliations with some nursing homes that what we're doing, we're leveraging some our dollars with federal dollars, and it's basically we put up one-third, the federal government gives us the other two-thirds, and then we kind of, you know, split that up with some of the nursing homes. So we're taking a lot of that money earmarking it for those room renovations and uh, my goal is we get enough cash build up that we don't have to borrow any money. I, I'd like to get out of that borrowing and we can just pay cash for that renovation. So it's uh, we're getting there. It's, it's right now our anticipation 2015-2016 we could be generating you know 1.8 to 2 million dollars in cash off our nursing home affiliations. So that's going to go a long way to help fund for that room renovation. So we haven't completely given up on it but it's kind of in a holding pattern because I want to build that cash up so we can be able to do that. And the rooms need to be renovated. They're, they're still functional, but they're starting to show their age. It's probably been a while, right? It's been a while since anything's been done. So they do need some renovation, and we're hoping by renovating we can reconfigure them so there's a little more room in there. They're, they're kind of cramped right now. So we're wanting to make sure it's, a, you know, if you have to be in the hospital, it's bad enough, but let's make it a nice room for you to be in. Do you and the board try to figure out, uh, it's pretty hard to do, I know, okay, here's where we are today, here's where we're going to be tomorrow, here's where we're going to be five years from now, maybe even here's where we're going to be ten years from now. We absolutely do that, and it's, you know, if I had that crystal ball that really worked, I could probably... <laughs> None a, of them do. <laughs> I could be a billionaire uh, trying to figure this out. And the healthcare market, and I get, you know, I've been in it for a while, 10, 15 years ago, you could almost predict where you're going to be year two, three, four, five. Right now, it's hard to predict where we're going to be month two, three, four, five. There's so many massive changes coming from the government's changing regulations and you know, Affordable Care Act, and what's covered, what's not covered. It makes it very difficult to come up with a, a realistic five-year plan. And we've put together you know, two, five, and ten-year plans, and it's kind of fun to look at that ten-year plan because if it all falls together, you know, we, we'd be rolling in cash. Sure. But you realize that's not going to happen. So we try to focus five years as our outside, more of a two-year, because that's about the window that I feel fairly confident where we're going to be in two years. But once you get past that, it's best guess because the laws and regulations change so much that what we thought was going to happen or what the government says, hey, we're going to do this. We've had instances where we've done what Medicare says, here's the regulation, in 20 let's say 2012, 2015, they said, whoops, we made a mistake, and they make it <laughs> retro back. So all of a sudden, all that money they paid us to say, hey, we shouldn't have done that, you owe it back to us. So that's the hard part, that you just never know where this stuff is going to go. It, you know, if you're looking for an absolutely uh, exciting career, <laughs> hospital CEO, because day one to there day two go. changes. Um, you know, I used to be seven feet tall and have coal black hair, and it's just <laughs> wore me down. Uh, but it is, it's fun. If you like a challenge, you know, that's what it's about. Healthcare is very challenging anymore, and it's technology is changing daily, the reimbursement rules are changing. It's hard to keep ahead of that curve. And, and you know, I've got a lot of very good folks I surround myself with to say, hey, I need help with this. And I think we do a fairly good job, but again, it's just so changing, so dynamic, it's hard to keep ahead of those curves. Does the ER stay busy on one lawn, John? It stays very busy. Uh, you know, it's you wouldn't think that, but we're probably running 9,500 to 10,000 visits a year, which is a, a fairly active, busy ER. Um, you know, uh, we've got good physicians. I think that's what's made the difference. And, and we start looking. If I departmentalize at the hospital and say, where are we at financially? Most ERs are the loss leaders for a hospital. They lose a ton of money there. Ours actually breaks even because of the volume and the, the folks we have there. And that's very unusual to say my ER will break even. And it's the, the heart of the hospital. That's kind of the door every, most people come through is through the ER. Most of our admissions come through there. So we really put a lot of time and effort to make sure we try to have the best possible people in there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And I think we've done a very good job with our physicians. We have some quality physicians. Of course, you're talking about the folks at Woodlawn Hospital, but Woodlawn Hospital recently recognized for a nice award. Yes, we were. That was kind of those surprises. Uh, part of the government, uh, they have a survey that they do, and that's conducted by an independent third party. We have no control over it. We give them our data, who was an inpatient in our facility. 
they call them, and it's about a 20, 25 minute phone interview, compile the data, and then they rank the hospitals. One star being you really got problems, five stars the best you can be. And uh, about two weeks ago, we got the notice that we were awarded a, a five star rating from CMS, which is Medicare, for our quality. That's just, I mean, we've worked hard and we thought we were really good. It's nice to have somebody independent that we have no control over say, you are doing a good job. The goal now is to continue to do that. And there was only uh, 10 hospitals in the state of Indiana that received that. And of the, I think there's 3,600 hospitals in the country, only 250 nationwide. And Woodlawn was part of that group. So very proud of that. The staff has done an outstanding job to get us to that point. But it's not something you take for granted. You work on that all the time. We work on that all the time. And it's, it's very fleeting. Uh, sometimes we'll see our scores and say, wow, you know, this particular score dropped. But why? We, we didn't change anything. And it has to do with perception and, you know, how that patient perceived the treatment they got in-house. So we work very hard to make sure that we try to keep up that high quality and make sure that patient's satisfied when they leave. John Alley, again, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. As we wrap this up, I should ask you about the fishing out at the pond. It's been very active. Has it? Yes. I, in <laughs> fact, I, I've... Uh, inadvertently mentioned to my grandson that when it got warm weather we're going to go fishing he lives in the southern part of the state and my daughter has called me and said don't ever do that again that's all they've heard now for two weeks is ready. When, when am i going fishing so uh, he's ready hopefully in the next week or so he'll be up here and i'll, I'll test the fishing myself we'll <laughs> see right. how it does john ellie as always we appreciate your time this morning thanks my very much pleasure for being to be here. here you bet